everyone. Let's get started as we are continuing to see a few more folks uh, joining us. Good afternoon, everybody, or good evening, good morning, <laughs> wherever you are. Uh, welcome to an info session about the Columbia Climate School in the Green Mountains program. My name is Cassie and I'll be facilitating the info session today. I work at Columbia University and I oversee uh, educational and outreach activities uh, currently for the Earth Institute and for the uh, forthcoming Columbia Climate School and uh, specifically K-12 education and outreach activities. So you're here today because you are interested in learning more about this fantastic program that we've put together in partnership with Putney Pre-College. Um, the session today is going to be made up of a couple of different parts and you'll hear from a couple of different individuals about the program, about the school, about Putney. Um, and then most importantly, we're here today so that you can uh, ask questions about the program and how you might participate, uh, applications, fees, so on and so forth. Um, so you'll notice that we're using Zoom webinars. So at any point, if you do have a question, feel free to use the Q&A box, not the chat box. We are going to be monitoring the Q&A box throughout the session, and we'll be sure to address all of your questions. So um, before we start, I like to briefly just quickly introduce everyone who's going to be speaking to you today. So first we are going to have Dr. Arthur Lerner Lamb, who's currently the Deputy Director of Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory, which is the largest research center that is part of the Earth Institute at Columbia. Uh, and then we have Governor Peter Shumlin, uh, the 81st Governor of Vermont. And he's going to, uh, he's actually going to be speaking about Putney as he's the co-director of Putney Student Travel. Um, who Columbia is partnering with um, on this particular program. And then we also have Becca and Maya from Putney Student Travel as well. And they are also going to be uh, monitoring the Q&A as well as talking to you a little bit about the application aspects um, of the program. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Art Learner Lamb first, and we'll uh, hear from him um, sort of briefly about um, the vision of the of the climate school um, and what we are what we are here for today. Art, right, if you want to take over. Well, thanks, Cassie, and welcome everyone. It's a pleasure to be here to introduce you to Columbia Climate School in the Green Mountains. Uh, the Columbia Climate School actually is the first new school at Columbia in about 25 years. But the real question is, why are we forming a school and why are we calling it the Climate School? The point is, and the reason is, it's because climate is a problem, is an issue that affects all of us uh, globally, uh, locally. It affects the way we do business. It affects the way we uh, interact with our, uh, with our community and it affects the way we learn. And one of the aspects of having a new school is concentrating on how we're going to bring together all the different aspects of the, Columb of the climate problem to see if we can't move the needle on solutions. We're actually optimistic about that. And one of the aspects of that optimism relates to the way in which we're interacting with our students at the graduate, undergraduate, and now the pre-college level to actually demonstrate what multidisciplinary learning, what multidisciplinary thinking actually is, and how you can bring an understanding of earth processes, climate, and the environment to everything that you might do uh, in your career whether you're a climate scientist or whether you're a lawyer or a politician or a doctor, climate will matter to you. Now, the climate school is not a new fabrication. In fact, it is built upon a more than 75 year history of leading research in the basic earth sciences, but along with an enormous amount of thinking from our colleagues across the university on how we might actually solve the problem. So we have more than 700 researchers, faculty, scientists, lawyers, public health experts involved in creating the school and combining their scholarship and their teaching so that we can come to a comprehensive view of these solutions. And this pre-college program that we're developing with Putney Student Travel is really going to be among the first ways in which we can communicate 
the, how that might be done. So we're very proud to be part of this partnership and I hope that you will learn from this information session. Thank you, Cassie. Great, thank you, Art. And now we'll turn it over to uh, Governor Shumlin. Well, thank you, Art and Cassie. It's so exciting to be working with both of you, with your entire team, with the Columbia Climate School. What an exciting evolution. First time, in, I mean, a first in 25 years. And most importantly, I'm super excited about working with the Climate School and the Columbia Climate School in the Green Mountains. Let me tell you just a little bit about why, uh, how I got involved and why I'm so excited to be a part of this program with the team of colleagues that you're going to be hearing from today. Putney was actually founded by my parents and we're now third generation. Becca is here with us. Uh, she's my daughter. Uh, but Putney is a collection of 34 of us that work in an old converted cow barn in Vermont to make magical educational summers happen for high school students. It was founded by mom, my mom and dad, that's their picture. Uh, brief story, my dad was of the generation where at age 17, you'd be sent off to war to fight Hitler. My mom uh, grew up in occupied Holland and she's Dutch and uh, you know she'd be playing with her Jewish friends in the streets and they'd be gone the next day. I only tell you all this because they were deeply influenced by the war. They were high school teachers and educators and they got what now seems very commonplace, but then seemed like a pretty crazy idea 70 years ago, think pre-airplane travel and all that, to start organizing programs for high school students, educational programs, college campuses, service projects, language programs, cultural interactions, homestays all over the world. And with the hope of helping to build world peace understanding and to build students' educational experiences. So anyway, We've been doing programs, you've probably many of you have heard of Putney over the years ever since. To talk a little bit about why we're so excited about uh, collaborating with Columbia University on this program, Vermont is the perfect place to be in the lab for the climate school at Columbia. And I'll tell you why, I'll just give you a little bit of my personal story. I've been at Putney all of my life. My community service, as Cassie mentioned, was to serve three terms as governor. And one of the things that I talked about when I was running for governor, and you see me there, just that's how you do it in Vermont. You actually go out and talk to people. You don't just buy ads. But anyway, I said among the things when I was running, it was the bottom of the recession. Uh, everybody was hugely worried, worried about the U.S. and the world economy. To put it in historic perspective, think President Obama and John McCain running for president. And it didn't matter what party you were. It's not like all partisan now. Everyone was running on jobs. And I ran on a platform, and I won't bore you with the whole thing, but one of the things I said is if you elect me governor, we're going to turn Vermont into the example of what a green energy state should look like. We're going to build out wind like you've never seen before, build out renewables, wind, uh, uh, solar. We're going to do energy efficiency right. We're going to convert our utilities to energy efficiency companies. And I said, when we do that, we'll create jobs. We'll put money in Vermonters' pockets because I think it's cheaper to build renewables than it is to bring in oil fossil fuels from countries mostly that don't like us. We obviously don't produce oil and coal in Vermont. And I said, when we do that, we can show the country one example of how a state can move in the right direction to reduce our carbon footprint because we're running out of time. Anyway, long and short of it is, uh, I served three terms. I won that race. And in a very short period of time, we made Vermont the number one solar state. We built out wind 22 times, solar 11 times. We came up with an extraordinary Vermont energy plan. I'm only telling you all, and by the way, we created thousands and thousands of jobs. Our electric rates went down when the states around us went up. I'm only telling you all this because Castleton University in collaboration with Columbia's Climate School is the perfect laboratory to actually take policy like Art was just talking about, take science and see how it's actually been applied to real life in a state where it works. Vermont's ideal because it's teeny. Everybody wants to talk to you. It, you know, we can put you in touch directly. What I'm excited about is putting you in touch with elected officials, with policymakers, with entrepreneurs. We have friends who have made huge amounts of money, you know, figuring out how to monitor wind and built the biggest wind monitoring companies in the world, how to 
take solar panels and turn them into tractors that follow the sun and made millions of dollars in the process. So in other words, we'll be looking at not only the science of climate, but really putting you in touch on the ground through field work with people who have taken their ambition to save the planet from ourselves and turn it into an entrepreneurial effort or a policy effort or a science effort where you're actually on the ground figuring out how it works. So super exciting place to be doing it. Very unusual collaboration. We are incredibly proud to be collaborating with Columbia University on this program. And uh, in addition to learning a lot and getting your hands dirty and empowering you to take on the biggest challenge that we face as human beings, it's also going to be a heck of a lot of fun. So I'm really looking forward to it. I know we all are. And I'll pass it back to Art or Cassie to talk a little bit more about the content of the program. Then we're delighted to answer your questions. Thanks so much for being with us today. Excellent. Thank you, Pete. And I'll, and just on that note about the importance of, uh, of the role of youth in, in all of this, I'll turn it back to Art and then uh, we'll get into the um, nitty gritty details about the program. So thank you, Cassie. Thank you, Governor Shumlin. You know, it, it's one thing to be teaching in a classroom, uh, but when you're teaching about climate, there's nothing that's better than being out in the field. And for all the reasons Governor Shumlin gave you, Vermont really is the perfect place to be doing this. Um, what we're going to be talking about is why it's so important for young people to get involved in the climate problem and finding climate solutions. First of all, climate is a long-term problem. Uh, the effects of and impacts of climate change are being felt now, but you're going to feel them throughout your lives. My children, my grandchildren, are the ones that are going to be most affected and so will you be. So you should have a part in putting together the solutions to developing the technologies to truly understand what the impacts might be, where the communities of color or, or of different socioeconomic status might be impacted and how you might achieve everything from environmental justice to the sort of technical solutions that are going to be required to combat the rise of carbon dioxide uh, in the atmosphere. Um, but on, on the other hand, how will you do that? What skills do you need? What knowledge base do you need? And the point we're going to make is that it's not just being a climate scientist that's important, but understanding the perspective from all directions, why science has to be an underpinning of policy, of litigation, of individual work, and what it means to be a community leader, because frankly, it's going to take a lot of local work to actually make the changes that we think are going to be necessary. So we're going to explore all summer long the ways in which you will be able to take local action. What does it matter? How do you achieve the sort of impact that's going to be uh, necessary? Uh, you'll be in a dialogue with the world's best climate scientists, with knowledge of policy, with knowledge of international and local law, and with knowledge of the new technologies that are going to be uh, necessary. You'll have a chance to interact face to face um, with appropriate COVID safety protocols uh, with our scientists and our scholars who have vast experience in education, not just at the university level, but in pre-college levels as well. Uh, Cassie, who has been hosting this conference so far, has over the past number of years built an incredible array of programs designed to help youth in pre-college situations truly understand what's going on with our home planet and how to achieve local action and local solutions as well. And we'll also be talking about ad advocacy. How do you galvanize your community? How do you make your community realize what the issues are in a very productive and constructive way? So we, we'll be also talking about what it takes to be a community activist as well. So on the basis of what we're trying to communicate, on the basis of the notion that it is you that will help solve the climate crisis, we're very happy to be working with Putney Student Travel, working in Vermont in particular. Really, there can't be a better place to actually do this. Thanks, Cassie. 
Great, thank you, Art. And now um, we are going to get into the more specific details about the program. So the Columbia Climate School in the Green Mountains program is taking place for the very first time, which we are all extremely excited about. Uh, our program dates are going to be June 27th to July 9th of 2021. And we will touch also on the uh, COVID safety measures that we have in place. Um, we felt that it was extremely important for us to offer this opportunity in person this summer. Um, I'm sure that many of you on uh, joining us today have had uh, online learning at some point this year and these types of interactions that we are going to have um, live are going to be truly, truly valuable. Um, as we said, this will take place at Castleton University's campus in Castleton, Vermont, and we have the program fee um, of $5,890. And this is an all-inclusive fee. So this covers absolutely everything that you are going to need during the program, including accommodations, uh, meals, program activity fees, field excursions, weekend trips, and any type of transportation that's needed during the program. This is specifically designed for students in grades nine through 12. Uh, what we will also consider applications from students who are who have just finished grade eight by the time uh, late June rolls around. So I'd like to get into a little bit more detail about the themes and the topics that we are going to cover. Uh, Art talked a little bit about um, each of those, but these are the five big areas that we are going to be exploring together with uh, Columbia faculty, with experts from the field, including um, government officials such as uh, Governor Shumlin, um, as well as uh, business and policy experts who are based in Vermont, who are just very excited about interacting uh, with youth on this particular topic. So we start our um, we start the program with kind of a deep dive into the science of climate change. How do we know it's happening? How do we back up the evidence that it is actually happening? And how is how are the changes and processes that we're seeing now different than what we have seen in the past? So we'll talk a little bit about the importance of paleoclimate using records and data to explore what is actually happening now and how we use that information to also build models and make analyses to predict what might happen in the future. Next, we'll go into impacts and resilience. So what, how is this actually, what is climate um, what does climate change actually look like locally? You know, we, we see and we hear about climate change as a big global process, but really the impacts are going to be very local and it's going to be very direct. And so what are neighborhoods, what are cities, what are states doing to prepare, to mitigate and to adapt to these, um, to future risks and uncertainty? And of course, we'll look at environmental justice. Uh, there's a very important question of environmental justice and equity um, and how communities of color are likely going to be mostly impacted disproportionately um, because of climate change. And so we'll talk about ways to address those particular challenges. And this really is connected to the next two uh, big program themes of, as well, including community engagement and communication and, and advocacy. Um, as Art mentioned, these are, um, these are all interrelated subjects and topics and climate change itself is a systems process and we want to better prepare you in thinking about climate change as a system, as sort of earth systems and, and everything is interconnected and there is a role that everyone can play and we want to make sure that we help prepare you to have that systems thinking and that approach and the tools that you're going to need to direct and lead change in your communities. So the um, in order to achieve all those wonderful things, we're going to set up the 13-day, uh, 12-night program uh, with a series of activities. So you are never going to be bored and you are going to be ex able to explore um, tracks and specific topic areas that are the, of most interest to you. We understand that not everyone who wants to participate in this and take action against climate change is going to become a climate scientist. And we want to 
facilitate, and we want to help better prepare everybody to address these challenges, regardless of what you plan on studying or what your future career might be. And so we have set up many different types of activities uh, where we'll bring in speakers, uh, you'll get to do lecture type of activities, you'll do workshops, you'll work directly with those experts and with our Columbia experts and faculty and staff as well. Uh, there's going to be an opportunity as well for you all to work with each other and make those really important connections and build that community because you are going to absolutely need that network and to be able to rely on that network and work with like-minded individuals um, that's going to be a critical part of this summer. So we'll build in plenty of opportunity for team building and networking as well. And as I mentioned, we will be taking uh, relevant field excursions. Um, you know, the previous programs that Putney has run, they've uh, taken students to solar farms to see what it looks like in action and talk to the, the individuals who are um, who have firsthand experience in, in businesses, in setting these um, businesses up and to setting up the infrastructure. So you're going to talk directly to those individuals. Um, and as I said, there will be also opportunities for you to work in small groups, to work in teams, to work in different teams. And lastly, the uh, 13 night or 13 day program will wrap up with final projects and presentations. And one of the unique things that we're also going to be doing in the fall is that in addition to if you end up participating in the summer, what we'll end up doing is that um, we're actually going to be offering, continuing to offer a couple of sessions in the fall for anyone who enrolls in summer uh, programs. Um, and we will ensure that we continue some of the themes that we are covering. Um, and we are going to be uh, making sure that we continue this learning and teaching process um, with you. And we are going to, um, I see some, some questions are, are coming in. So I'd like to address this. There's one that I'd like to address, which is that students are going to be uh, working together on presentations and projects. Um, we are, I'm gonna talk a little bit about sort of how Putney and, and Maya and Becca might also jump in on this later. Um, there will be a pod like uh, sort of structure to the program um, and we will absolutely facilitate opportunities for students to work together um, on, on presentations, on projects um, and based on what students are interested in learning in terms of the, the tracks and the themes that they might follow, we'll be sure to, in, um, we'll be sure to have experts assigned and group leaders assigned to those relevant topics. So uh, just to give you a glimpse of some of the um, leaders uh, that we have on the Columbia side, um, both faculty and staff who are extremely excited at participating this summer. Um, so you've already heard from Art Learner Lamb. Um, and as I mentioned, he's a deputy director of Lamont Geordie Earth, Observ Earth Observatory at the moment. Uh, he's a seismologist by training. Um, he's also uh, director of our sustainability science master's program. He's been at Columbia a very long time and during his, um, his time at Columbia, he has uh, led scientific expedi expeditions all over the world. He has done consulting in the, over the last 20 years. He's lectured and um, written widely about natural hazards and society and how do we promote sustainable development efforts in the face of extreme natural hazards and risks that we face in the future. Uh, next up, just to give you a quick highlight of all these individuals uh, is Lisa Dale. Uh, Dr. Dale teaches in our undergraduate sustainable development major. Um, and prior to coming to Columbia, she worked at um, Yale's Center for Environmental Law and Policy. Um, and with a background in political science, um, she actually teaches a variety of courses, um, including environmental policy and governance, as well as ch the challenges of sustainable development, climate change adaptation and resilience, and science communication. Next up, we have uh, Tom Chandler and Josh DeVincenzo. So both Tom and Josh um, are affiliated with uh, the National Center for Disaster Preparedness. So Dr. Chandler is uh, a research scientist at the National Center for Disaster Preparedness. 
and his research and work primarily focuses on um, post-disaster housing and economic recovery. Um, and he focuses on geographic and social networks, community preparedness, and mitigation strategies for dealing with the impacts of climate change. Um, he also leads uh, many very uh, national, I would say, national projects um, funded by the Federal Emergency Management Agency um, about continued uh, economic recovery, housing improvements, um, improving individual and business uh, financial literacy, transitioning disaster survivors from temporary to permanent housing. So lots of innovative um, sort of recovery efforts, um, both on the economic side and on the housing side. Uh, Josh uh, DiVincenzo works very closely with Tom at the National Center for Disaster Preparedness. Um, he's a senior instructional designer there, and he his focus has really been developing uh, learning experiences that are associated with response, recovery, and resilience. Um, again, he's been instrumental in design, designing these national uh, scale instructor-led uh, curricula and training programs um, to, facil to facilitate stronger and, and strengthen stronger financial literacy um, and community partnerships. So they're going to uh, be heavily involved in the climate impacts and resilience part of the program. Uh, next, we have Dr. Lisa Goddard, um, who's a senior research scientist at the International Research Institute for Climate and Society, another Earth Institute research center. Her work is very inter interdisciplinary and it's also very global. Um, she has uh, most of her research has been focused on um, diagnosing and extracting meaningful uh, information from climate models and available observations. So she sits on many um, advisory boards, including the National Academy of Sciences um, and the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Um, so a, a lot of the uh, climate modeling, what do we, what can we learn about uh, from climate models? How is this going to impact us globally? Those types of processes. Uh, Dr. Goddard is one of the most prominent figures out there who, who's publishing on, on this topic. Um, and so she's also very excited to join us. And lastly, we have Laurel Zaima, who's the Education and Outreach Coordinator at Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory. Um, she has substantial work experience working with youth, uh, teaching students through informal education about the natural environment um, through hands-on experiences. And so she works on many education uh, initiatives within the Earth Institute. Um, and she's particularly interested in communicating science to the general public. Um, and so she has worked with K-12 students, undergraduate students, teachers, um, and she has taught um, it, to all of these different audiences about sustainability, climate change, and she has a particular expertise as well in what's happening in the polar regions. So this is all to say that we are bringing together experts in the physical and social sciences. Um, and we are going to be, we are all committed to equipping students with the tools that they need to take action um, for, for impact. Um, and so what we'd like to do uh, is head on over. So we're gonna wrap up um, this sort of program overview you know, for, for us, um, we are extremely, extremely um, excited about offering this opportunity. Um, it's going to provide a forum for young people to organize, to network, to learn and share their hopes and concerns and entrepreneurial ideas and plans of action um, in a public setting, working alongside some of the most um, prominent and uh, prominent experts in the field and, and very much cutting edge in a way. Um, and students will gain the skills, both the skills and the knowledge um, to make positive change and to take climate action in, in your communities. Um, we wanna provide you with a platform to elevate and share your ideas and your strategies and turn those ideas into meaningful action. And we wanna help you sustain it, which is why we are offering um, continue to fall engagement through uh, weekend remote sessions because we realize that many of you are going to be coming from all over the country, hopefully for, for this session. Um, and yeah, so I think I'm gonna wrap up there because I think I have, spoken enough and I want to make sure that we have plenty of time um, for questions and 
let's see here. So we have some questions um, that are going to be live. So actually, I realized I forgot. Becca is actually going to talk first about the um, application and the eligibility, and then we'll turn it over uh, to, to Q&A. Sorry, Becca, why don't you go ahead and, and let us know a little bit about the application process. I got too excited. <laughs> Thank you. I'll try to keep it brief and just speak quickly about the application process and who is eligible to apply. Um, so this program is open to current 9th through 12th grade students, and we will also be accepting applications for current 8th grade students, so rising 9th. Um, admission to the Climate School is selective. We look for highly motivated students who are eager to participate in climate action in their communities and who are really excited by the idea of joining like-minded, engaged peers on this climate program. And to give you a quick overview of the application process, it is all online. And to apply, you go to our website, click apply and create a login. You will be asked to fill in some information telling us who you are, where you are from and how we can get in touch with you. Then you will select the Climate School program as your program choice. And to secure a space in the program, you will put down a $700 enrollment deposit. And that deposit consists of a $200 application fee and a $500 deposit that will be applied towards the total program fee. So after securing a space in the program, you will have time to complete the remainder of the application steps. And those will open up for you in that same online portal. So you'll be asked to complete a short personal statement telling us a bit about who you are and why you would like to join this program. And you'll also be asked to submit two teacher references. And a quick note on the teacher references, um, you don't actually have to obtain the physical references from your teachers. You just give us their contact information and we will reach out for you. And then once we have received all of that, the admissions team will review your application within a few days of completion, and we will notify you of the admissions decision by email. And assuming that you're all accepted, that same login becomes what we call the digital locker, which is an online portal that is your one-stop shop for everything and all of the information you need leading up to the program. So that includes very detailed packing lists, travel information, medical forms, and more. Um, and we often get the question of when is the deadline to apply? And we have a rolling admissions process. So we will be accepting students until the program fills to capacity. That being said, this is a very, very busy enrollment period um, in part because there's so much pent up demand from last year. So we highly encourage you to start your application and secure your spot as soon as possible. And please do not hesitate to give us a call with any questions about the program or the application process. Okay, great. Thank you, Becca. Um, okay, and I said that I would actually cover um, sort of uh, safety um, as that is uh, still a very, um, very big topic that we are still working through. Um, I just want to reiterate that we are here and committed to providing students with the safest uh, learning experience. Um, and uh, Putney has a very strong reputation and last summer actually ran in-person programs with absolutely no issues and cases. And we are following um, all the guidelines um, and we've developed the Columbia Climate School program in the Green Mountains at Castleton specifically to allow um, for a small campus community um, and where students can engage safely uh, that's re and rel relatively isolated from sort of other crowds and other big gatherings. Um, and also in a state, in the state of Vermont where the spread and impact of COVID has been extremely well managed. Um, and just to give you a couple of examples of the types of safety guidelines that we have in place, um, as I mentioned previously, there's going to be a pod structure to the, to the program um, that will ensure that uh, each pod has its own housing, dining hall space, classrooms, and meeting space. Um, 
students and program staff within a pod interact directly um, and cross pod interactions will follow um, social distancing guidelines. And of course, this is all uh, developed and will likely be updated as we get closer to the program start date. It's looking um, like we are seeing positive news, but of course we will uh, be absolutely prepared to um, put exactly the same measures that Putney had uh, last summer in place, um, which allowed for the pod structure um, and also for in terms of arrival on campus. Um, to, uh, the process is to, of course, designed to give peace of mind to families and ensure um, that it's not brought, uh, that any COVID or uh, cases are not brought onto the campus. Um, these will, there, there were guidelines in place last summer where uh, arrival uh, before, um, arrival before the program would involve pre-program isolation following testing protocols, um, depending on, on the state um, and CDC guidelines. Um, so if you do have um, any questions about the safety guidelines, there's an extensive um, FAQ uh, page, both on our program website, as well as Putney's. Um, and as, as I've said, we um, will be updating this um, based on state guidelines and CDC guidelines within the within the next uh, two months. Um, what I also want to just add here, and, and Pete, I see if you want to add anything else here as well, um, all the director, any any individual who's going to be involved in the summer program will be trained in proper hygiene, uh, social distancing protocols and procedures. Any Columbia staff coming into this, we will ensure that they're properly prepared um, to deal with this. There's an on-campus nurse with regular office hours um, and on-call 24-7. And so we are very much dedicated to providing um, a safe space and ensuring that all the staff and anyone who's going to be on campus involved with students um, will follow very strict uh, safety protocols. Pete, did you want to add something here? The only thing I was going to add, because that was a great summary, is what Cassie's outlining is planning for the worst and hoping for the best. And I just wanted to cheer you up a little bit and say that the Governor Scott, who was Lieutenant Governor when I was Governor, announced this week that he expects, because we're making such great progress with VAX, with uh, COVID generally in Vermont, that we we expect most Vermonters to be back to a pretty normal state by the time this program begins. So. We know, I talk to parents and students every day who say, listen, free us. Like we've been learning remotely. Or we've been spending way too much on social media. We just want to be normal and back together again, learning in a healthy environment. And we're going to work really hard to get you as close to back to normal as we possibly can and still meet the safety guidelines that Cassie outlined. We expect we'll be able to diminish the high standards that we have right now, assuming that the governor's right and we make progress and we're making great progress. So cheer up this is an opportunity we hope yeah. to have a really close group social experience not just with each other but with the faculty one big family really enjoying an incredibly beautiful uh, spot and i just want to mention we haven't talked much about the campus if you built a campus for covid it would be castleton university uh, i was on the board of the state colleges it's a gem of a little campus with great facilities in a little village that literally has like a diner, a pizza house, an ice cream shop, a teeny little store, a town hall, it's gorgeous. You can walk there from the campus, it's totally safe. And it's tucked between the Green Mountains to your east and the Adir Adirondacks to your west with lakes all around that we go swimming in and have a great time. And there's a bike path that runs from uh, the, the Massachusetts border all the way to Quebec and runs right through. So bring a bicycle, uh, lots of hiking, outdoor stuff when we're not focused on the curriculum. So super great place to be and we're gonna have a lot of fun while we're at it. Okay, excellent, thank you, Pete. Okay, so this brings us to the end of the presentation. I've put two uh, pieces of important information here. Uh, one is the program website, which has uh, hopefully a lot of answers to your questions, and we'll get to the Q&A momentarily, as well as the um, uh, email that will go to a group of us um, should you have any additional questions as you're preparing applications, or if there's anything else that we did not cover today that comes, um, comes to mind. 